Hi ladies, so uh, our third video uh, for studying um, for study ecology and we're going to be looking at habitat studies because generally this is the question that comes up and it comes up most often. So as part of your two year course we have to do a habitat study. Now that was planned to be um, the very end of this year in Tato Park which looks like it may not be the case um, but hopefully maybe next year we'll get to go there okay. Now studying a habitat um, so let's look at, at what we're going to be going through. So we're going to have to learn how to study habitat, the steps we have to take during that, how we estimate animal species in a habitat, how we estimate um, and identify uh, plant species as well, and how to use a quadrat. Now, habitat study. So when we go to take when we take when we do go to Tato Park, girls, what we do is we go we're we brought to an area that's all grassland. It's a beautiful big pasture, okay, um, and that's going to be our habitat. So the first thing we have to do is we have to map it. So you imagine you're like a bird floating over the um, area that you're studying, and you draw it from above, okay, and you try your best to keep your you try your best to keep your scale as good as possible, okay. So obviously you don't have to be too accurate, but you you know if it's a square field, you draw a square field. If there's a big tree in the middle of the field you put that in there as well okay if there's fencing if there's a pond or a lake or a river that's all drawn in there as well if there's any paths that goes in there too so that all goes into your map and on your map you record what's north south east and west you do that obviously with a compass next girls you have to try and identify and find uh, different living organisms so like insects usually okay now last time we were lucky enough to find a frog and also there was a uh, deer in the field as well so we included those as a part of our living organisms too okay so how we how we catch those things so the smaller things obviously pitfall traps it's essentially a little hole in the ground covered by something like a piece of wood or a rock and little organisms will fall in um, and wait to be found and then you set them free once you've identified them okay sweep nets so it's essentially like a big long fishing net that you run through long grass or through bushes or through hedges um, and you get some small insects that way and then pooters you would have used those at junior search so they're the little things that everybody's always frightened to use because um, they're essentially a big straw that you suck up the insects into a container with so um, there are three different ways you can get get uh, you can use to find small insects usually, but sometimes small mammals as well. Now looking at the adaptations of the different organisms. So you can look at the adaptations, girls. Um, adaptations are the features that an animal has or a plant has that allows it to survive. So for example, a frog is green. That's That allows it to be camouflaged, therefore it doesn't get caught by predators, okay? That would be an example of an adaptation. We'll look at that now in a second. We identify the organisms using a key. Now, obviously, like nobody's expecting you to recognize every insect that you find. So we use these keys. So the keys are like pictures that allow you to go, oh, that's an earwig or that's, a, you know, a, what other um, things might you find? A mayfly or um, that is a, uh, what else could it be? Like a caterpillar or something, okay? So we'd have picture keys that allow you to identify things that you don't recognize. And same with the plants too. You also have to estimate and determine and identify um, and the identity of a number of plant species in a habitat. So we do that using quadrat and also keys as well. We'll talk about how to use quadrat in a second. And we look at the abiotic factors in the habitat. Remember abiotic means non-living factors that determine um, where something lives and, and how something lives, okay? So for example, light, soil pH, um, and soil temperature and air temperature as well. So light is measured using a light meter. You can get that, you can download that on your phone really easily. Uh, soil pH is just using pH paper or universal indicator paper. Very easy again, we just have it in the lab. Um, and then also um, air temperature or soil temperature is just done with a thermometer. So the one you may not have heard of before would be a light meter. And light meter measures light and its units is lux, L-U-X, okay? Now, living organisms. So the things that we identified in our last uh, trip to uh, Tato Park girls were um, blackbirds. Okay, now feature that uh, that that has to allow it to survive um, would be a sharp beak to allow it to penetrate soil and get earthworms. Okay, and um, the deer. Okay, will be antlers to allow it to um, fend off other deer for mates. Okay, that means another adaptation that has. And obviously, the frog we've talked about it, the fact that it's camouflaged and that it's green. All right. Now, some species um, in regards to plants that we would have seen, obviously grass is a huge one because it's a pasture or a grassland area, and um, plantains here, okay, kind of broad leaf, uh, green plants as well. Daisies are very important. Um, then we've got thistles and we've got dandelions as well. Now, 
features that all of these plants have is that they are green and obviously they can make their own food. That's a really important adaptation for a plant. Um, also, um, the um, thistles are tend to be spiky, so they prevent herbivores from eating them, so they allow them to survive. Dandelions have, you know, their dandelions are the um, plants that um, that have really fluffy seeds that you can blow and they disperse on the wind. So their wind dispersal seeds will be an adaptation that that has. Um, and obviously this plantain here with the broad leaves is really broad leaves to allow it to get as much light as possible during the day okay um grass uh, adaptation that it might have will be produces a huge amount of seeds so therefore can produce lots and lots of offspring now um we'll talk about how we identify and get an idea of the number of plant species in an area in a second but in terms of living organisms now you don't do this during a habitat study but you are expected to know how it's done so for example let's imagine i go to the phoenix park and i want to have an idea of the number of deer present in the phoenix park and um, because that's really important because what they do is they do a cull every year to ensure there's not too many deers there because that could have damaged the vegetation that's there all right so i have to make a decision on whether we do a cull which means killing some of the deer or not so it's an important decision so what i do is i go to the um the Finks Park on one day and I put a little blue spot on each deer that I come into contact with okay so I you know kind of spray paint on its back blue spot on the back of it okay then I come back on a second day and what I do is I mark each um deer that I catch with a red spot okay now what I have to do I have to use this formula here and um, to try and work estimate then the number of deer in the in the Finks Park so I take the number of um deer that was marked on the first occasion multiply by the number of deer that was marked on the second occasion. And then I am um, divided by the number of deers already marked on the second visit. So the ones that had two marks on them by the end of it, okay? So um, that's how you get an idea of the number of animals in the habitat. Obviously that's much harder than plants, because animals or living organisms like insects move around. So it's much more difficult to determine their numbers than it is plants. Plants tend to be much easier. So the way we estimate the number of plant species in the habitat is using a quadrat. Now there's two ways, and also you can use a line transect or a belt transect. Okay, we'll talk about that in the end. There's two ways you can use a quadrat. You can use it by uh, using percentage cover or by frequency. All right, frequency tends to be quicker, tends to be easier um, if you're outside and trying to do it in a hurry, okay? Now, percentage cover is fairly simple. So every quadrat um, girls, is broken up into um, 25 squares, okay? Um, and each square is worth 4%. Divide 25 into 100, you get 4, okay? And then we use this to work out the number of plant species in the habitat. So here um, we can see that grass is 96% of the quadrat, okay? It's in all the boxes, okay? Um, except for one which is oh excuse me except for one which is um your which is your dandelion okay four percent dandelion is found here all right now you can be more specific here and, and maybe say only half of that box has a dandelion so therefore i'm going to say it's two percent so you can break the boxes up but the easiest way to do it i think is just um saying okay if it's present in that box it's four percent and then obviously the rest will be grass um, so here's a question to try. So maybe pause it now and see if you can work it out in regards to daisies and dandelions. Now, um, first of all, this has a different number of boxes than the uh, than the other one. OK, so you're going to have to um, bear that in mind. All right. So you can stop this and give this a go yourself. All right. So let's have a think about the, the percentage um, number um, for each box here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. So it's a 10 by 10 box. So each box is worth 1%. Okay. So here we've got 2% dandelion. There's one dandelion here, one dandelion here. And um, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would say probably 7% daisy. So two and seven is nine. Um, and then you're going to take that away from 100 because the rest is grass. So that will be 91% grass. Um, and then 2% uh, dandelion and 7% daisy. Um, now, frequency is, is much easier. The way we do this, girls, is nothing to do about counting up numbers, counting up boxes. We simply tick or cross whether a plant species is present. So here that I, I would tick that grass is present, and here I would tick that dandelion is present, okay? Now, there's a formula you need to use when you're doing frequency, all right? And I put X for everything else. 
So this is an example of, of how we do this. So here we can see grass is present in all of our um, in all of our quadrats. Dandelions are present in most of them. OK, and then plantain, the broad leaf green plant is, is present only in one. So if I'm looking at dandelions, it's going to be five because that's the number of quadrats it was present in divided by the total number of quadrats multiplied by 100. So therefore, my percentage frequency of dandelions is 50 percent. My percentage frequency for grass was 100%. My percentage frequency for plantain, perhaps that's something you can work out now. Okay. Um, quadrat use must be random, girls, okay? We can't go over and just place the quadrat over the nice flowers that we find, okay? You have to do this in a specific way So, um, for it to be representative of your habitat. So what we usually do is we take a pen or a, a pencil and we throw it behind our shoulders and um, without looking obviously you don't want to hurt anybody but you know you would throw it as randomly as possible behind you then you place the quadrat over where the pen landed okay um and then you do your quadrat study so just be aware that that has to be random in nature so um you throw a pencil over behind you okay you place the quadrat where the pencil landed calculate percentage cover or frequency and you should repeat that 10 times to get average results to be really representative of your habitat uh, a line transect or a bell transect girls you usually use this where there's kind of a change in um maybe in the slope of an area or it may be light so it could be um going from um light to dark underneath a, a load of trees it could be going across a land dune it could be going towards a lake so it's usually where there's some sort of change in an abiotic factor okay would that be water or light or heat or whatever okay and it gives you an indication then it essentially is just a rope with lots of knots on it and you record what's present at each knot it will give you an indication whether the uh, um, environment is changing over over a distance.